Jesus on the right foot this Sabbath. We want to start off with some intercessory prayer on this Sabbath. I don't know about you, but I had a tried and true week. I mean, the, the Satan has been trying my faith, something serious. I don't even know how else to put it. I'm trying to put it into words. I don't know about you, what you've been going through. I know some of you maybe have family problems, job issues, school issues, living up to peer pressure issues, all kind of issues. But today we can lay those issues at the feet of the cross. Amen. Come on now. You got to be a little bit more excited than that. Amen. So we want to do today, if you want to come forward to the foot of the cross today, we're going to pray. We're going to take our burdens to the Lord. We're going to start this thing off on the right foot. Why don't you come bring your burdens to the altar today so we can pray, lift them up before our Savior today. That's all right. I know it's a little weird having intercessory prayer in the beginning, but that's all right. We want to get it started off on the right foot. If you got something you want to bring to the Lord on this Sabbath, bring your burdens to the altar today. We're praying. God, you are the only one who is worthy. Only your name is worthy, O oh God. All week, God, we have tried our best to sustain ourselves. We have tried our best to keep our own sanity. We've tried our best to put food on our own tables, God, but only you are worthy, God. And so today, God, we have taken a break. We've paused and we've come aside just as you have commanded, God, on your Sabbath day. Not for our own good, God, but to bring your name, the praise, the honor, and the glory. And so today, God, we just pray simply that your presence will fill this place. That your Holy Spirit will move within these pews, God. That even those young people who people think aren't, aren't really capable of praising your name will shout out unto their God today. God, we come bearing our burdens, God, our troubles, God. Some of us come having so much issues, God, we can't even start with a list. Some of us don't even know how to put it into words, God. But one thing we know and are sure of today is that our God can handle everything. You can solve every problem, God. You can deliver from every situation, God. You can transform lives, God. And so today, we're laying everything at your feet. We're praying, God, that you will move, that our strength will be, will be strengthened today, God. That you will take even our meager praises today, God. That you will lift it up before your throne and let it be something that is worthy, God, to be in your presence. And when all is said and done, God, we just pray that nobody, God, today will leave here the same. But that somebody would have encountered your presence that somebody would have encountered this Jesus. Not that they would have heard a good word or sung good songs or listened to good music or come because they feel like they're required to come, but that they may encounter you. And when all is said and done, God, we will be careful, Lord, to give you the praise because only you are worthy, so I pray in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. And for his sake we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Well, you go, go ahead and go back to your seats. We're going to... I want to welcome you today to our camp meeting, Youth and Young Adult Slam Federation Camp Meeting. Come on, what? Man, I'm going to be up here for a while if that's how dead y'all going to be. Just going to let y'all know. Down, I'm, I'm, I have church down there in Grand Avenue, and they'll let you know. We, we get down in Charleston, Missouri, so y'all going to have to talk to me today. I'm trying to get y'all to talk to each other. Come on, if, if you are happy to be in the house of the Lord on this Sabbath, why don't you go ahead and say amen. Give God some praise on this Sabbath. That's all right. That's all right. We have exciting things planned. You know, just to say something a little bit about the Sabbath, I feel compelled. Uh, when I was uh, visiting over in Israel, uh, when I was in the seminary, I had the privilege of, of opening up the Sabbath with the Jews. You know, we, we usually look at Sabbath as something that starts at 11 o'clock and ends sometime around 4 o'clock, you know, with a little bit of food in between. I had the chance of opening up the Sabbath with the Jews at the Western Wall on the side of the Temple Mount. And I'm standing there in awe because in, in my midst are all these Jewish people from all different walks of life. I'm talking Orthodox Jews, Reformed Jews, some Jews who during the week don't even talk to each other. But here on Sabbath evening, all of them are here at the Temple Mount gathered in the name of the Lord, worshiping God. 
And it is a scene like no other. It would definitely change, believe me, the way you view the Sabbath. They are dancing around in circles. They're singing songs, ushering in the presence of God into the Sabbath. And one Jewish guy comes up to me, because of course I'm a black guy, and I'm, I'm looking real out of place. And so he walks up to me, trying to explain to me the Sabbath, not knowing that I too am a Sabbath keeper. And he says to me, you know the Sabbath for us, just listen to what he says. He says the Sabbath for us is, is like a queen. It's a monarch. God is the king, and the Sabbath is his queen. And the Sabbath is as if the king and the queen have gone away on a long journey, and on Friday evening, they're returning to the city, and so we run to the city gates in order to welcome them back to the city. I'm just talking about the Sabbath, how they view the 24 hours that we sometimes take for granted, that 24 hours where we don't have to hear our teachers' voices, our bosses' voices, the 24 hours where when the 800 numbers call, we can hit deny, even though we do that during the week anyway. But I'm talking a 24-hour period in which God has returned to his people. His presence is here. The Bible lets us know that he comes close on the Sabbath. And so today, I don't want this to just be, oh, we're gathered for camp meeting. It's pomp and circumstance. We just got to be here. I know some of us are forced to be here. Our parents sent us here. They dropped us off here. But I want it to be an experience where we don't just come here for coming here's sake, but that we will run to the city gates so that we will meet our God. Are we gonna do that this weekend? Amen. Amen, come on, are we gonna do that this weekend? Amen, we wanna prove to the people at the big house that the young people can have church too. Amen? Amen. Oh, come on, you guys gotta do better than that. I'm trying to tell you, I'm gonna stand up here all day if you don't give me something more than that. But, I, know, I know, right, it's, it's okay. One more time, if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, why don't you give God a, a round of applause. Happy Sabbath, EAY. It's good to see you. You know, this past week, it's been a rough week, and not for the same reasons probably why uh, Pastor Douglas was talking about. But, you know, I'm a Miami Heat fan. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it got a little scary. Spurs fans. All right, that's why you're booing. There ain't no Spurs fans. People booing me. But you know what? It was just one of those weeks where, you know what, just when you think your team is doing good, then the next day they just get smacked down. And one thing, one thing I like, I love the Miami Heat. I love LeBron James. Love Dwayne Wade. Chris Bosh. Birdman. You know, but one thing I don't like about Miami and their crowd is their crowd is so dead. Like when you go to Oklahoma City and you see their crowds, their crowds be, be on it. Be pumping them up the whole time on their feet. But when you see the Miami crowd, they relax, sitting down. They got, they got two of the best players in the world playing at the same time, and they sit back like it ain't nothing. Don't make no noise. No cheers. No praise. No nothing. And you know what's interesting is that we serve the most high God. And I don't know about you, but in life, it's the playoff time and God is dribbling and he's moving through traffic for you and he's hitting jump shots and he's hitting fadeaways and background dunks and he's passing the rock to you and when you mess up, he's picking it back up and getting the score where it should be and if you were in the crowd and you're watching God play your game, what type of reaction are you going to give God? How about somebody stand on their feet and cheer God on? Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Lord. Somebody say, hallelujah. 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 Give God some praise. Amen. He's worthy. Go ahead and be seated. And I love the fact that I don't have to be on the court playing that game by myself, but that God is doing it for me. And so if you're from your respective churches, I want you to make some noise too. If there's any young people, young adults from Agape, make some noise, Agape. Is Agape here? Agape's ashamed. Oh, is Berean here today? Woo! Praise the Lord for Berean. Amen. Is the lighthouse in the building? Woo! There it is. There it is. Is Mighty Mighty Northside here? And is the tabernacle of praise here? 
Let's go down south. It's Cape Girardeau, Grand Avenue here today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now give it up because we create the Slam Federation of Churches. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right now, what I want to do is I want to invite a special young sister of mine on up because she was with me and a few of you guys here. She was with me and we went on a mission trip. And our theme for this year for Youth Ministries is Mission Possible, Agents of Change. And Breon Mann was one of those missionaries. And I just wanted to come say a word about what she did and what she's passionate about in life. And she has a little message for us. So just listen to Breon real quick. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning, happy Sabbath. One more time. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Okay, so mission, missionary, missionary work. All has the same little miss in it. But okay. Anyways, um, I was with Pastor Roll two years um, doing IGEN Impact Generation. It's a group of kids that go out to um, do missionary work and to also learn it and be taught it so we can come back to our respective churches and teach it to others. And the mission, the mission trip was the two week, well week, but from there, it's a year long commitment. It's a year long of going back to your youth and doing things and doing, uh, planning things. Because our youth are, you know, sometimes we stay back, sometimes, you know, we don't want to do things. But if you have someone that will step up and be a leader and be able to be like, okay, let's all do this together. Then one, my break, but a whole team of people. So me, I study at Oakwood University. I'm currently going to be a sophomore and my major is political science with a minor in English with hopes of becoming um, a family attorney. So people often say, well, how do you bring in God with law? My hope is to become a lawyer that puts God back in justice, put God back in the family. So many times, us as a family gets broken up and they blame God. But with me, my, my plan is to make God the center and from there, spread out and let everyone know that God is real and God is working still. So I'm planning to minister in my law experience by bringing the family together so that no one can break us apart. Praise the Lord. What we want all young people to realize and recognize is that you don't have to wait for a certain time when you start stepping out on faith and doing big things for God. But right now, what you're passionate about, right now, things that you want to see changed, or, or you might have a friend or someone that you know um, might be having a hard time struggling with food or something like that, you could take some stuff out your cupboards and go bring it to your friend. And so right now, you guys can be the missionaries that God is calling us to be. You don't have to wait till you're my age and old or anything like that, not that I'm old, you know. But, but you guys can be missionaries now, and we want you guys to think about that as our theme this year is Mission Possible agents of change. Right now we have a skit for you and we're going to bring these skit guys on up right now. Hello? Ma? Yeah, guess what happened to your boy this weekend? Nah, nah, I'm not coming home. Nah, nah, that's not it. Yeah, yeah, I got, I'm just gonna tell you, I got saved. Yeah, yeah, I know, it was crazy, right? Like, I remember it, when the pastor was preaching, it was so intense, like my, my hands were sweating, my heart was pumping, and my feet were tapping. I remember getting up, it was like slow motion, like the Matrix. Looked over, the guy next to me was like, excuse me. I slid out, I remember walking down the aisle, and just like hands up high, and was like, Lord, please wash me clean. Take everything away, for me, that isn't of you. I remember walking to the altar, and everything was just so, just, just so amazing, like a whole new world. Yeah, that's how it happened. Yeah, yeah. No, but right now, I'm just, I'm just um, reading my Bible right now. Yeah. Oh, hold on, Mom. There's uh, somebody at the door. I'm going to call you back, all right? All right. Yo, who is it? Uh, JC Cleaning Services. JC Cleaning Service? Yes. Uh, is your name Jason Brown? Yeah, it's Jason Brown, but I didn't think I ordered any like cleaning well, services. Uh, this is a full paid service for Jason Brown. Jason Brown, this is like one of the TV shows, right? Like, it's like a uh, hoarders, house fix up, pimp, pimp, my, no, it's not pimp, my ride. 
well, either way, man, it's cool with me. Look, my motto is, if it's free, you got me. All right, check this out. I'm just going to be around the house if you need me, all right? All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you doing, man? Whoa, whoa. That's Keisha Booty Car Johnson. You're not moving this right here. This is a part of my life, dog. You, you can keep this here, all right? This is a little important to me. All right, you just, um, you start with that stack of papers over here or something like that, all right? I'm trying to take my picture. Keisha. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what you do? Chief, what you doing, dog? What you uh, doing? It says teacher edition, and uh, you're not a teacher. Man, this says tutor edition. Man, give me my book. Uh, Cheat on my test. Okay. Well, maybe do that. Uh, stuff, man. What else do you need to clean up? Man, just get the trash up, right? Just mop some, all right? Please, can you do your job? Thank right, uh, where's these stacks of CDs? <sighs> what player? Gosh! Dude, give me my CD. You check them out. What is this? Kendrick Lamar, Rihanna. Dude, you trying to steal my CDs? Did you trying to do it in front of my face? Look, man, this is what I need you to do. All right, check this out. You see that? Like, the, the, the lint on the chair? That can go. All right, you got dust on the ground. That needs to be out of here. That pizza box from two days ago, that should have been eliminated a long time ago. I right, see, one day you're going to thank me for teaching you how to do your job, player. All right, all right, all right, all right, uh, okay. And, uh, liquor. Man, what are you doing with my bot? Dude, look, you messing with all my stuff, you, you being too noisy, I just need you to get out, all right? Hey, you want me to no, clean, no, right? No, no, man, this is not garbage, look. Get out of my house, man, you just messing up my stuff, all right? Just get out. Get out! JC Cleaning Service. I ain't even heard of JC Cleaning Service. I'm about to Google this junk. JC Cleaning Service. Oh man. Mm -hmm. That's that's Jesus Christ cleaning service. Did I just kick Jesus out of my house? I, what's the contact information? I gotta look this up. Hello? Yeah, I, I wanna speak to Jesus. Yeah. Hello, Jesus? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know it was you, man. I, I didn't know. Yeah, I remember that prayer. You hear my prayers? Man, I, I, are you available? Do you think you can, do you think you can come back? Yeah, I didn't know it was you. Like, yeah, I kind of expected, you know, like a robe, the beard, and the sandals, you know? No socks. <laughs> yeah. Can you, my house is already clean? Man, thank you, God. Yo, I got to put you on the phone with somebody. Hey, Ma, you ain't going to never believe who's on the phone with us. Oh, praise the Lord for that beautiful skit. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that skit is a mimic of us. Although we hate to say that, but that's us. God sends people into our lives to clean up certain areas, but it's, we, keep, we like to keep that cute little sin. We like to keep our little Jay-Z CDs and our Young Jeezy albums. We like to keep the vodka or the Ciroc around in our house. But when it's time to move that out, God sends somebody. So right now, I know Pastor KP already came up in here, but and prayed and everything. But where there is much prayer, there is much what? And we cannot make it through this life without what, everybody? Come on, y'all. Y'all don't know that. We cannot make it out throughout this life without what, everybody? You can't walk into your house and have nice food in your refrigerator without what? How many of y'all believe we need power? So right, what we're going to do right now is time for prayer again. Amen. And what we're going to do is we're going to break up into like twos or threes. And whatever the problem is in your life, we just want you to take that thing to the problem solver. Jesus Christ himself is the problem solver. He can put his hands on your problem. He can speak to your issues and he can solve that problem. So you, whoever you next to, just grab them and just open up to the Lord. Amen? And I'm going to close this thing out in prayer. So come on, guys. Don't be shy. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, 
Lord God, we thank you for waking us up this morning, first and foremost, oh God. Father God, we thank you for giving us traveling mercies to allow us to get here today, oh God. Father God, you have been so good to us in the past. Father God, we, we complain about the little issues, Lord God, but our, our good always outweighs our bad, Lord. So God, we thank you for being so graceful and merciful to us, Lord God. Father God, we are going through so much. Temptation is coming each and every way that we can look. Father God, it's hard out here and we need you. Father God, we need you like we never need you before. We need your spirit in our lives, oh God. Father God, we, we have, become, have come short of the glory of God, Lord God. We just ask that you would cleanse us. Send a JC cleaning service to our homes and to our hearts. Clean out the dirty corners, Lord God. Go into our dresser drawers. Go into our closets, oh God. Go into our refrigerators, oh God, where we are hiding things from your sight. And take it out of our lives, oh God, even if it hurts us. Father God, there is so many young people in here today, and we thank you. Father God, there's so many young people in the world that are going through things. They don't know where to go, and they're going each and every way, and it seems that they are walking off to the cliff. So, Father God, we just pray that you will send your spirit. Use us, oh God, these young people in this church, to be a light on that hill, to follow your great commission, oh God, and to go into all nations preaching the gospel, oh God, and to be unashamed, to proclaim your name, oh God. Father God, we just ask these blessings from you today. We ask that you will continue to bless this service, oh God. Continue to tabernacle with us today on this Sabbath, oh God. We ask that you will bless the pastor today, oh God, as he breaks open the bread. And Father God, most definitely, we pray that our eyes, our ears, our minds, and our hearts will receive you today, oh God. So as he delivers your word, we pray that you will speak to him and speak through him. That somebody in this place will be saved. This is our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. One of my, one of my favorite verses, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, as my members know, I say it all the time, found the book of Revelation. It describes uh, those that have been redeemed to God. It says they have overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and also by the word of their testimony. I believe that sometimes we focus a lot on what Jesus has done at Calvary. and Forget sometimes that he continues to work even today. That the same blood that he shed on Calvary for the remissions of our sins is still at work in our lives today. And there's something that is special and important about a testimony. I don't know about anybody else, if you can testify to that fact, but I know for myself, uh, when I decided to give my life to God, that what helped me through was somebody else being able to tell me what they had been through, the things that they had overcome by the help of God. And so today what we want to do is we want to testify. I'm not going to call anybody up I'll write to give testimonies. What I want you to do is to turn to your neighbor or somebody behind you, and I want you to share something that God has done for you this week or even something that God has done in your life. He might have saved you from something. It could be something as simple as, I made pancakes, I didn't think I had syrup, I bust open the cabinet, and there was just enough syrup for the amount of pancakes I made. It could be something that simple. But we want to testify today of the goodness of God. And so I want you to do that right now. Don't look at me, look at your neighbor, turn to somebody, and I want you to share with them how God has been good and what he has been doing in your life. And everybody, since we are alive today, should have a testimony. Amen?
Sounds like God has done a lot, since you guys are still testifying. If I could get two volunteers to come up and share the testimony that was shared with you. Can I get two volunteers? I need for two people to come forward and to share with us the testimony that was shared with you. I got one. I need one more. God blessed me um, when I was when God blessed my grandpa when he was on the road. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, when I came here, I was praying for a job. I was looking really hard, and I got one. So that's my testimony. Oh, praise God. God bless me, my father and my brother, because they're on the road and they got into a car accident. Are they okay? Yes. All right, praise God. <laughs> God bless my dad to travel for work to Virginia uh, safely back and when he went to. All right, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm encouraged right now because we got the little ones testifying too. All right, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God's done so much for us. Hallelujah. You know the song, Sing With This? Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Lord I love you, everyone singing, Lord I love you. Even when I wasn't, Lord, you've been faithful. Singing, you've been faithful. Yes, you have. Faithful. And we praise you for it. Praise the Lord. Praise Just the audience singing. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. If he's done something for you, you ought to sing. Hallelujah. That's the highest praise. 
Hallelujah. He died for you, and now that you have a freedom to worship, so you ought to worship him with the highest word, the highest praise you can. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. One more time. Everyone singing, no music, no music at all. Hallelujah. 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 That's the best I can do. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Go and put your hands together if we serve a God that is worthy of our praise. And we serve a God who's truly worthy. He went and died for us and we now have freedom to worship. How many people are happy for freedom? Y'all don't seem happy. Y'all seem like you all are still in bondage. How many people are happy for freedom? Okay, let's try this out. How many people are happy for freedom? How many people are happy for freedom? Okay, we're gonna get you there. I need you all to, you know, relax, you know, a little bit. Just, you know, just let it, let it hang out. You know, it's okay. It's all right. We're here. We have freedom to worship. Okay, y'all go to bed late last night or something. Come on, let's wake up, y'all. Come on, come on, wake up. Freedom. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Clap. Come on, clap with me. Come on. Sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I want to shout louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I want to love you more than before. Say freedom. 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 Hey.
no more bondage. I am. Come on, come on. Everybody sing it. No more shackles. Say no. No more shackles. No more chains. No more. Yes, the audience. Oh, say no more shackles. Yeah, yeah. Everybody sing it. Oh, no more shackles. Say no more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Now raise your voice and say hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more shame, no more bondage. I am free. How many people are really free? Come on now, everybody singing. No more, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. One last time for good measure. Hallelujah. Oh, say hallelujah. 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 the freedom that you've given us for dying on the cross for our sins and we thank you for that hallelujah yeah oh lord i love you you are worthy 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 yes you are 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 you are worthy you are worthy Connected. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to keep it going. He truly is worthy of the highest praise. We need your help on this one again. Go ahead and clap with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, you are, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever and ever. Your power is greater, is greater than anything. You know the song, because, because of your grace I have life everlasting and more abundantly, Lord. You mean everything. And I will worship you. 
worthy father hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord sing blessed blessed be the name be the name most high there is no one you are you're perfect in all of your ways strength of my life strength of my life my life you are holy that's what the angels sing. And I owe, and I owe you the rest of my days. And I will worship you. And I will worship you. Most God. For you are Lord of all the earth. For you are Lord of all the earth. You're the King who reigns. You're the King who reigns. Your love has lifted me, Savior. Savior, your love has your lifted, love has lifted Master. me, Master. I live for you totally. For you totally. My heart My is heart now and forever yours. Forever yours. Oh, Jesus, 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 the name above every name, name above every King of Kings, King. and Lord of Lords, you reign. Lord, 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 you and the reign. devil, and the devil is defeated today. Every soprano singing. Sing. Oh, 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 no altos right now. Oh, oh, Every soprano. Oh, 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 you've done for us, Lord. So we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In harmony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Truly, you are worthy. And we thank you.
testing. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for the praise team and the band and for everybody else who has been uh, ministering today. We praise God that we're here uh, for our camp meeting um, in St. Louis. It's a little bit different than our previous years going to Kansas City and meeting all together, but nonetheless, it's good to come together as brothers and sisters, particularly speaking, as youth and young adults to magnify God. We don't always get to do this, and so we treasure it when it happens. Amen? Amen. Amen. A couple of things I want to let you know about the day uh, so that you're abreast of what we're going on. Immediately after church service, we have food served for you downstairs, so you don't have to go uh, anywhere else. Uh, we're going to feed you and take good care of you. And then starting at 3 o'clock, what time, everybody? 3 o'clock, we're going to go into our workshops. We have workshops upstairs for young adults, and then we're going to have a workshop for teens downstairs. And so um, at 3 o'clock, remember, uh, we're going to have workshops for you. So it's a full day packed with us, and we're hoping... Uh, that you'll stay with us, that you'll be blessed, that you'll be excited about what's going on. And then tonight at 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, what time? 8 o'clock. We're going to have a poetry cafe downstairs. Now, this is how I like to do poetry cafes. Yeah, there it is. Snap it up. No clap. You snap. There it is. We're going to have a poetry cafe. And so if you, if you have poetry, if you write, um, if you just express yourself uh, through writing and you'd like to share or you feel the Lord saying, you know what? That particular poem that you wrote or that particular thing that you wrote to me, I want you to share with the world. I want you to bring it. We do open mic, uh, open mic poetry cafes. And so if you have something, if you have a song, a rap song, a poem or something like that, we want you to feel free to come on back at 8 o'clock. Uh, we'll have our poetry cafe. Um, I have a special friend here from Andrews University. She's going to be our featured poet for the night. Her name is Rihanna Mitchell. I want her to stand on up real quick. Stand up, Rihanna. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And she's actually from Denver, so she is CSC family, Central States Conference family, and uh, she's a school now, so praise the Lord for all of the students who have come back from college, and we'd like to welcome our executive secretary of the conference, Roger Bernard. Amen. Amen. He came in right on time. <laughs> Just the best. And praise God. Now, if you know something, something's weird about what's happening right now. If you saw the flyers of camp meeting, they were beautiful flyers, wonderful graphics, and you saw a guy on the flyer who was supposed to be our speaker. His name is Pastor Jonathan Coxum um, from Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, he was actually supposed to be our speaker and do one of our workshops, but um, unfortunately he came down with a serious illness. Um, we, we're thinking that it might be heat stroke or some sort of virus. And he can barely move, and so we want to pray for him. We want to lift him up. He really wanted to be here, uh, but he just couldn't muster the energy to come and then to preach and do all of the ministry that he had to do. And so it was, it was better for him to stay and to heal and to recover. And so that's why I'm here. Amen? Amen. So, so if you pray for me and humbly receive me, uh, then we'll try to dig into God's word and see what we can find. Amen? Is that okay with you? Amen. I know y'all get to hear Pastor Roe all the time. And so, amen, praise the Lord for the support, that's what I'm talking about, amen. So you get to hear me one more time, and uh, we praise God, and we're going to make sure that this day continues to, to be a blessing to those who have come out, amen. Have you been blessed so far? Yeah. I know you have, I know you're like, you have. You know what's so funny about young people, let me just go on a little rip tear real quick. When I was growing up, I'm going to talk about me, as I'm talking about you. You know, growing up, 14, 15, I used to say, my church is so boring. My church is boring. They don't have anything for the young people, especially the music. I was like, man, man, if we just had good music, church would be on and popping. And then guess what? I went to Oakwood College. And I got there, and the music was on and popping. It was everything that I dreamed of. Drums were nice and loud. Folks were singing contemporary songs. Looked like Kurt Franklin, Fred Hammond. Everybody up there all at once. Huh? And Marlon with Kurt Franklin and them. And do you know what I noticed? I was not prepared for praise and worship. Meaning, I didn't know what to do with it. I had everything I wanted, and then I sat there and was like... And folks was like, clap your hands. I was like, I've never done that before. Somebody was like, just lift holy hands to God. And I was like... I don't know how to really do that. And what was funny that I had to learn is that I had to, I had to grow and to learn that it's okay to magnify and to praise God. For so long, I was worried about what my friends were going to think. Oh, you look stupid, dog. You with your hands on up looking all emotional. 
No, but I recognize that, you know what, God and what he thinks is way more important than what my friends think. And then I began to worship freely and to give God the praise and the adoration that he deserves. Amen? Amen. Amen. So don't be afraid to praise and to give God, mag magnify him and worship him. We're going to bring the praise team back after I'm done. I'm not going to be long, I promise. We're going to bring them back and uh, they're going to they're magnify God one more time. And we want you guys to not only look at them, but to lift God up. Because in, in the house of God, there is only an audience of how many? One, one, one. God is a spectator. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Interesting story. It's something that you've read over and over and over again. And we're going to do that today. Luke chapter 19, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. When you have it, say amen. If you don't, say help me, Jesus. If you didn't bring your Bible, say all is lost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, you need, you need to get next to somebody who has a Bible so you can read along with us. There it is. Let's pray before we read God's word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're looking for something new, brand new in our lives. Father, everything is somewhat the same in our lives, which is partly the reason why we have a hard time changing. And so we're asking that as we open up this passage of Scripture, that it would do something new to us. We don't know what, we know the areas of our lives that need to change, but we haven't figured out exactly how. And so if you're able to pour out your grace to get us there right now, I'm asking that you would do that. So fill this place with your presence, God. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Everybody say, amen. amen. I'm reading from you, to you from the NIV. The Bible says, Jesus entered Jericho and was just passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was very very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a very short man, he could not see him because he couldn't see over the what? The crowd. the crowd. And so this is what he did. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree since Jesus was coming along that way. And when Jesus, verse 5 says it like this, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, dude, come down immediately. Today I must come to your house. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this. And they began to complain and murmur, Jesus is going to his house to be the guest of a sinner? Do he know who that dude is? But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now, I'm going to give half of my possessions to the poor. And with the other half, if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'm going to give fourfold the amount back to them. When Jesus heard that, he says, wow. Today's salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. If you're like me, you love these competitive reality shows. This is the voice. American Idol, uh, X Factor, America's Got Talent, Country Music Star, and all the other ones that you can think of in terms of these competitive reality shows. And what's most interesting about the show is not necessarily who's going to win, but it's really when folks start out what they look like. The things that they do to be seen. I mean, you got folk who think they, they can sing and they really can't sing. And you got folk that think that they can dance and they really what? Can't dance. Folk think they got talent and they really don't have. Yeah. And it's sort of sad and funny to see, but. But in order to get on these shows, this is the route that you have to take. You have to do something wild. You have to do something different. You have to do something weird. You have to sing something that's hard with the widest of range in order to be seen by the judges, in order to stand out from the crowd. And what's interesting about certain people who get on the shows is that they know they wouldn't be picked. Like, dude, you know they wouldn't pick you any day. But they get up there anyway. It opened me up to something. There are people who want to be seen by the right people at the right time because if that happens, then somehow life will forever be different for them. Some people don't even want to win the show. They just know if they can get on TV, 
and be seen by the right people at the right time, then life will forever be changed. The Bible breaks it down like this. Jesus is toward the end of his ministry. Three and a half years, he's been walking, he's been teaching, he's been doing miracles. He's coming towards the end. And it's so close to the end that he is heading down to Jerusalem where he's about to die on the cross. And the Bible says that as he's traveling from the north and he's heading south to Jerusalem, that he has to go through the city, through the city parts, Jericho. So the Bible starts out with verse 19 saying, Jesus entered Jericho and he was just passing through. He's not stopping because he has any business in Jericho. He doesn't have anyone to meet. He doesn't have any appointments, nothing of the such. He's just passing through Jericho because it's the quickest route to Jerusalem. Wow. And then the Bible says that though, though Jesus wants to get through very quickly, the crowd ain't going to have that. By this time, Jesus has hit celebrity status. He's famous now. All of the healings that he's done, folk heard that he walked on water, that he turned five loaves and two fish into bread, that he heals uh, dead little girls and blind men can see, and he turns water into wine, and he talks to the winds and to the waves, and, and he does all of this miraculous stuff. And so this is Jesus' about second or third time coming through Jerusalem, and so the whole sh city shuts down when Jesus comes back through. Businesses close up. There are, there are signs that say close down. We'll be back in a little while. And everybody pours into the main town square where Jesus is coming. And it's flooded with people. Crowded, packed. And Jesus is in the middle. And, and I can imagine his disciples are standing all around him like bodyguards. Back up. Let the, mass, let the Messiah through. And the last time he came through Jericho, there was a woman who knew that if she touched the hem of his garment, she could be made whole. So there are people trying to touch him. There are people trying to get near him. There are people trying to ask him questions. People want to talk about philosophy. People want some clarity on that parable. Everybody wants to get close to Jesus, and Jesus is pressed in the crowd as he's trying to go through Jericho. And the Bible, out of all of the people that they could talk about in that crowd, it talks about one guy, Zacchaeus. It gives a lowdown on Zacchaeus. The Bible says that Zacchaeus is a tax collector, and he's a chief tax collector, and he's wealthy. Who wants to be wealthy up in here? I'll be hearing how rich folk be so sad. I'll be like, I don't understand. I'm just so depressed. I just have so much money. I'm like, boy, if you just give me that money one day, I'll tell you how to be happy. But Zacchaeus is in the same position. The Bible says that he's a chief tax collector. He's a boss of all bosses. When the IRS is auditing and doing all this stuff, he's the one that owns one of the chains. He's a chief tax collector. Some of y'all don't have jobs in here, but when you do get a job, and you're calculating how much you make an hour, all right, so I made 15 an hour, and I worked these many hours, so yeah, when I get my check this week, it's going to look like this. And you know when you first get a job, even though you're supposed to get paid bi-weekly, you get paid on the third week, because you just... So you're waiting for that second week, check didn't come. You're like, eh. you're like, all right, that's all right. I worked an extra week, so that's going to be on that check. That check going to look fat. That bad boy come in the mail or it hit direct deposit. <laughs> and it's like discount prices on your check. It's like <laughs> slash half off. You're like, you like, wait, wait, wait. You're like, hold up. I put in a good 40 hours of work. This is not representative even of minimum wage hourly work. You want to call your boss and find out what's going on. And they simply tell you, taxes. Taxes. And all of a sudden, you start becoming all patriotic. I'm going to march on Washington. Tax. You start joining the, what's, what's the, uh, the Tea Party? <laughs> you start out there picking it because you don't want no more taxes. Now, Zacchaeus is hated by his entire nation. Because Zacchaeus doesn't collect taxes on behalf of the Jews, no. He collects taxes on behalf of the Romans. And check this out. The taxes were so heavy in Rome that they took 40% of your wages from your check. Half. Now, that's before you gave tithe and... There you go. Oh, baby. And so when you get your check, your check... 
doesn't even look like a check. It just looks like a ch. Just a ch. <laughs> Forget the rest. It's a ch. And you're looking for it. And then, and, then, and then when you go to Zacchaeus, you're trying to figure out why, if we all collectively hate the Romans, if we all recognize that they're oppressors and that, and, that, and that we hate them and that one day we hope to overtake them, why, brother, are you working for them so hard? Why is it that you go to the single mothers who you know are not making a lot, and yet and still you go and you still lift heavy taxes, Zacchaeus? Why is it that you know that this family just had a death in the family? They paid all that they could have, and yet and still, you're still taking taxes. Listen, Zacchaeus was so thirst, so greedy, that the widow with two mites, dropped the two mites in, if he was there, he'd have took one. And Zacchaeus, the Bible says, wants to see Jesus. Corey, he wants to see him. Now, why he wants to see him, we don't really know. The desire of ages gives a little blurb about it. She says that Zacchaeus, even with all his money, wanted a better life, end quote. He wanted a better life. He had a lot of money. He was very rich. He had power. He had authority. He had all of that stuff. But the Bible says, with all that he had, he still wanted a better life. Zacchaeus is one of those type of people that you look at, and he has it all together on the outside. But the Bible reads his heart, and it says that there is something yearning in him. He wants a better life. He's like many of us. Most of our stuff is straight. But our spiritual lives is not as straight as the external life. Clothes look nice, snapbacks are fitted, in style. You got the latest shoes. You got all of that stuff, but your spiritual life is not as nearly as presentable or nearly as flashy or swagged out as, as your external. Your soul is suffering, and Zacchaeus is in the same position. And the Bible says he wants to see who Jesus is. He wants to see who he is. Now, Zacchaeus is interesting because Jesus has been through Jericho before, but he never thought about going to see Jesus. Jesus was there when Jairus' daughter died, and he raised her from the dead. He was there. Zacchaeus lived in town, didn't bother to go see him. He was there. He was there when the, women, when the woman touched him with the issue of blood. That was in Jericho, too. Zacchaeus didn't care about going to see Jesus then. But something in his life is happening now where all of a sudden it's very important to see Jesus. Yeah. And there's something different about Jesus because a tax collector was not allowed in church. They thought tax collectors were so dirty and so filthy because they rubbed shoulders with non-believers that they were not allowed to come into the synagogues and into the temple, into the religious places. And so Zacchaeus hadn't been to camp meeting, Sabbath school, church in a very long time. And he was cool with it up until now. And he hears that Jesus is coming through town and there's something different about how Jesus responds to people. He hears that Jesus even has a tax collector in his crew. Wow. He hears that he has Peter and John hanging out with him, and I know they curse, still curse. While with Jesus, they curse. They got Judas with him. Judas been a betrayer long before he even betrayed Christ. He has all of these sketchy characters. He has a character in his crew who barely even believes in the Messiah and been following him for three and a half years. He hears about all of these colorful characters and he, and he thinks in his mind, well, maybe if I can just see who he is or even meet him, maybe things will be all right. He, the Bible says he wants to see who Jesus is. That's interesting. He's like me. I want to see Jesus. And I'm not talking about spiritually. I'm talking about like, for real, for real. I want to see what he look like. <laughs> I want to see if he's that Scandinavian dude that you see in those pictures. <laughs> or if he's the African-American Jesus with the pick in the back of his head. You seen the steps of Christ with the pick? <laughs> anyway. I, wanna, I actually want to like see what Jesus looks like. Is he tall? Is he short? Huh? Was he husky? Was he tight built? Was he a little skinny? I want to see what Jesus looks like. And Zacchaeus has never seen Jesus before, and so he's trying to locate him in the crowd. 
And just the time Zacchaeus is trying to get in through the crowd because he's too short, his circumstance permitted him, didn't allow him to see Jesus, he can't get through. And he really can't get through because some people notice who he is. Kick him in the butt real quick. Elbow him in the temple. See him trying to step through the gap and they move in front of him real quick. And, 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 and he, doesn't, he doesn't want to do a whole lot. He just wants to see who Jesus is. And he's probably one of those people that sort of wants to sneak in church in the back. They want a blessing. They just want to know that God is in their lives and they want to just leave. They don't want to say, shake hands with the pastor. They don't want to get up and sing. They don't want to testify. They don't even want to be seen. They don't want anybody talking to them, asking about where they've been, what you've been doing. They just want to get in there, get in God's presence, have an experience, and move right out. Listen, that's all they want. And Zacchaeus feels a little strange about seeing Jesus because most of the people who see Jesus got real issues. They need healing, they, they lame, they blind, they sick. All these extreme things. And all Zacchaeus wants to do is to have a, 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 an experience with Jesus where he can be forgiven. He doesn't need a mortgage payment paid. He doesn't need God to show up in the 11th hour to help him out with a term paper. Doesn't need God to help him out with a jam, with a quiz. No, he just wants to go into God's presence and know that he's forgiven for all that he's done. But he can't get through. Have you ever felt like that, like right when you needed God and you tried to pray? Felt like your prayers were bouncing off the ceiling? Have you ever had all the intention of the world of seeking Jesus with all your heart, of really looking for him, and the moment you try to do that, then you have a thousand and one things that come into your way, and they begin to create a crowd? Have you ever promised yourself, all right, tomorrow morning it's going to begin. I'm going to have devotion. I'm going to see God's face. I'm going to sing to him. I'm going to do all this stuff. And the moment you wake up, you recognize, you look at the alarm clock, you woke up late. You got to hurry up. You're getting dressed, you barely brush your stink mouth, you rush outside, you're heading to work, you're heading to school, and you forgot to have devotion. You say, you know what, well, fine, I'll do it at lunchtime because I have about an hour, I'll take about 15 minutes, and you promise God you're going to do that. You're even one of the people that got your Bible app, and you see, oh, there's a Bible reading plan for 90 days. Read your Bible in a whole 90 days. You know what, I'm on it, Lord, that's me. You set your plan up, and all of a sudden, day one skip you, didn't read. Day two pass you, didn't read. You're getting all the alerts. Did you read your Bible today? Don't forget your Bible reading. And all of a sudden, you start recognizing that somehow or another, at the moment you tried to seek Christ most, you recognize how much barriers and how, much, uh, how big the crowd is in your life. Just when you want to get spiritual. You wasn't always like that. Just at the time you want to get close to God, you recognize how many barriers you have in your life. And most of the crowd, the crowd in your life is not bad. Because the crowd wants to see Jesus too. But it's a problem when the crowd is crowding out Christ. Yeah. yeah. I remember and I told some people this testimony. When I was at Oakwood, I wasn't the best of people when I first got there. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and my freshman year was pretty wild. Wet and wild, as they say. And I was doing all types of stuff, smoking, drinking, typical stuff, when you just, you know, you're not connected to the source. And I was snuck out the dorm one night, about 2 a.m., and there's a car, there's a little Acura, Acura Vigor, two-door. And we stuffing all these guys in there, and we're about to drive to a hotel, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on at the hotel we're about to get ourselves into. <laughs> and so I sneak into the car, and I'm sitting there, and we're waiting for the driver to come. Pitch black, dark outside, we're about to drive away. And all of a sudden, as clear as day, God says, get out the car, this might be your last night. And I sit there, and I look around like, you heard that? And I sit there, and I'm like, get out the car. This might be your last night. And I start arguing with the voice. I'm like, I can't sneak back into a dorm I just snuck out of. Can't happen. Don't work like that. 
You get out, you come back in the morning, it was open hours. Voice said it again. Get out of the car. This might be your last night. Now I'm squished in the back of a two-door coupe. Squished in the back. And all of a sudden, I start to respond to the voice that's talking to me inside. You need to get out the car. You need to go back inside your room. This might be your last night. And I'm sitting there, and I'm getting shook. I'm like, this might be my last night. And do I really want to spend it like this? All hazy and dazed out? Nah. And then I say to my friends in the car, I say, I got to let, let me out. I got to go. <laughs> now, they like, no, you're going to get us all in trouble. And I'm like, you got to let me out. Let me out. Let me out. And they're like, you're going to get us in trouble. And I get out the car and I walk back to the dorm and I say to myself, well, this is the day I get kicked out. And I walk up to the dormitory door, Peterson Hall, and I look the dean in the face. He looks at me. It's past curfew. He's supposed to write you up. He looks at me, buzzes me in, waves, smile, and I walk back to my dorm room. And I say, that's miracle number one. And this is how I gave my life to the Lord. It wasn't a big appeal. It wasn't a preacher. It wasn't a big church service. Music wasn't playing. Right there in my dorm room that night, around 2 some a.m., I got down on my knees, and I just confessed my sins. And I said, God, you need to take me right now. I had all pictures of DMX, Tupac, Biggie, Mace, all that up there. I began to rip them down, tear them down, got on my knees and prayed. And from that mo moment on, I've just been walking with him. And one thing I recognize about seeking Christ is oftentimes you have to separate yourself from the crowd in order to get close to Christ. This is what Zacchaeus does. Zacchaeus says, I can't get through the crowd, so I need to run ahead of the crowd, climb up the tree, get to a point where my vision of Jesus, listen to me, where my vision of Jesus cannot be hindered, where I can see him. Ah, your boy Zacchaeus does it. Little short legs, he runs to the tree, climbs up the tree, gets to one of them low-hanging branches, and he waits. And he can see the procession of Jesus. And Jesus is touching little babies. And he's talking to folk. And he's shouting hallelujah. And they're singing hosanna because he's about to go to the cross. Only a few people in that crowd really know what Jesus is about. Yeah. And Jesus is walking through real slow. And the procession of people is moving this way. And he can see the small character of Jesus in the middle of the crowd. And Zacchaeus is looking. The Bible says that when Jesus gets to the tree and he's walking with the crowd, then all of a sudden, he stops. And the crowd's trying to figure out what's wrong. The last time somebody did this, Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? Who, who, who touched me? And everybody, like, I ain't, I ain't touched, I ain't touched. Jesus stops again. And they're looking for the woman with the issue of blood, but she already healed. He stops and everybody gets quiet and all of a sudden Jesus begins to compute that something in this vicinity square right around here needs me. Someone right around here needs to know who I am. There is someone in this place right now, the Bible says Jesus reached the spot, somewhere right here somebody has come looking to see if I will forgive them. Somebody wants to know if I truly love them. Someone wants to know if I will heal them. Someone wants to know if they can have a better life right here, right now, somewhere inside. And so Jesus starts looking around. And he looks to his left, looks to his right, and he's like, no, it's not them because they're in the crowd, but they're really not seeking me for who I truly am. They want stuff. And then all of a sudden, the Bible says that he looks up and he sees Zacchaeus in the tree. Wow. And verse 5, I love how it starts out. The Bible says in the King James that when Jesus reached the place, the NIV says when Jesus reached the spot. The thing that blew my mind is that verse 1 said that Jesus entered Jericho and was just what? Passing through. But verse 5 says that Jesus reached the, oh yeah. It's like Jesus had Google Maps in his heart. And the Google Map told him that once he ended up under that tree, that you've reached the spot. Wow. <laughs> it's like a GPS unit, global positioning system. Jesus had one in his heart, God's positioning system. And I even researched how a GPS system is 
how it works. How does that thing work? I mean, all the, most of you guys have it on your phones. You can get here to Timbuktu by the use of your phone because it has a GPS unit on the inside. <laughs> when you look on HowStuffWorks.com, they break it down real easy. They say your GPS unit, when you turn it on and you look for directions and you're lost and you don't, don't know how to get home or you can't find your way, it says when you turn it on automatically that your GPS unit, it connects to three satellites in space. And it says that, number two, when it hits those satellites, that it gauges how far you are from the satellites, and once it does that, it can give you directions where you need to go. And once I heard that, I said that this is the gospel being spoken right here. That just at the point in time in your life where you feel lost or you feel disconnected or you feel so far from God and you don't know how to get back and you can't get through the crowd, you can turn on your GPS system. Yeah, and it will connect to the three out there. And it will show you how far you are from him and then once you recognize where you need to be with God, then it can tell you where you ought to be going. And the Bible says that when he gets to that sycamore tree, that Jesus had reached his what? Spot. There it is, baby. Yeah. The world thought that he was just going to pass through. And if Jesus would have just passed through, he would have passed you by. There's a song that says, yeah, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my, my humble cry. <laughs> While on others thou art what? Do not do what? Pass me by. Jesus, I know you have a whole lot to do and you have, you have a big agenda and you have people to preach to and you have folk to heal and, and you have winds and waves to speak to and you have wars to stop. But I'm asking, oh God, that you not pass me by when I'm crying out for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not like other people, Lord. I'm not sick and I need to be healed, but I'm somebody who's guilty and I need you, oh God. I sinned against you, oh God. I need you, oh Lord. Please don't pass me by. Zacchaeus is one of the few people that you'll see in scripture who sought Jesus out purely for forgiveness. Purely for forgiveness sake. One of the few people. Everybody else needed something big in their life. But Zacchaeus needed forgiveness. The man who was paralyzed, lowered through the roof, didn't even know that the main thing that he needed in his life was to be forgiven more than he needed to be healed. When they load him through the roof, Jesus says, my son, thy sins are forgiven thee. And that man got so happy because that was really the source of his problems, not his physical condition. It wasn't the fact that he liked to smoke or he liked to party or he liked to steal or he liked to lie. That wasn't his problem. His problem was that he needed to be forgiven and he needed to be connected to the source. And when Jesus reaches the spot, Jesus recognizes that I have somebody in my midst who really wants to meet me and to know me. They want to find out what I'll be like towards them. And Jesus reaches the spot, looks up, and says like he's known the boy for years. Zacchaeus, come down. I got to go to your house today and eat. And Zacchaeus, number one, is overwhelmed at the fact that Jesus knows his name. I am a friend of God. He knows my name. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The Bible says that before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. That before your mother and your father copulated to create you and to conceive you in the womb, it was my great idea to bring you about. I knew you before you knew yourself. I knew you before time began. Zacchaeus, come on down. I got to go to your house today. And because God knows your name, he knows your rap sheet. God knows your ailments. He knows your sins. He knows what you really need. He knows that you're in need of forgiveness. And he says, let me come to your house. Who wants Jesus to come to their house? Raise your hand. I sure do. But I'd rather have Jesus come to my house when I know it's clean. I'm not down with guest visits. Folk just drop it in on you. You got stuff all around the floor, and dirty dishes in your sink, stuff on the TV you shouldn't be watching, 
stuff, the last page that you left on Facebook, what did you say? I don't want Jesus to come up on me like that, but that's the way he works. And there is no way that you can get yourself together or to put your house in order to impress Jesus. Don't ever let it be said out of your mouths that I'm going to try to get myself together and then I'm going to come back to God. Foolishness. But simply turn your GPS unit on, your God positioning system by faith. And he will connect you to Christ. And you will hear those words said like it was said to Zacchaeus. Today, Terry, salvation has come to your house. Why? Because you let me in. He didn't say... You started keeping all the commandments real good. He didn't say you started attending church regularly. You good. He says you let me in. And today, salvation has come to this house. Let's listen to the song as we give an appeal, as we respond to God. And our prayer is that God would move on your heart so much and that you would make a Zacchaeus move today. That out of all of the crowd that's in your life, that you would separate yourself from the crowd and come to Christ. Listen to them sing. Draw me near, near to you, Lord. Close to where you are. Close.
Somebody, somebody in here, you're resonating with Zacchaeus because you're like him today. You're like him today. God is showing you that you want to see more of him in your life. You want to see who he truly is to you right now. Maybe you've done something in your life or maybe you're in a place in your life that you've never been before. And knowing that Jesus is passing through has never meant more to you before like it does now. And so right now, God might be calling you to separate yourself from the crowd and to move closer to him. Because you can't get through the crowd by yourself. You promised yourself you would, but you couldn't. You can't. For right now, God is saying, you know what? Today, if you seek me out, I'll come in. And you don't need healing, you don't need a miracle, you need forgiveness. So every head is bowed and every eye is closed. God has been speaking to you, you know it. Like he spoke to me that night when I was in the car. And the message is to you that somehow or another you need to separate yourself. And when you make that move away from the crowd, let it be a move that brings you closer to Christ. And I want to know if you're in here today. If God is calling you right now, I want you to be so bold. Nobody's looking at you. Because everybody who's okay, everybody who's safe, everybody who's good, everybody who's righteous, they're praying and sitting down. But if you know you need him like Zacchaeus needed him that day, I want you to stand up right now. Is there anybody right now? Come on down. 
If there's anybody else like that, if there's a young person, you're saying, you know what? Today I need you. Right now, come on down. Come on down to where I am. I want you to move from out of the pews. Come on now. There's somebody else. The Lord is calling you. And he's saying it's time to move away from the crowd to do something drastic in your life. And one of the drastic things right now might be for you to come up out of your seat. And come close. Is there anybody like that? Praise the Lord. You tried before, but the crowd got in your way. You had good intentions, but with the good intentions, you couldn't act on it. Right now, God might be pouring out the grace for you that is so sufficient, catered for you to bring you closer to him. Yeah, right now is the time where you can come. You are free. You're free of what your friends think of you. You're free of what you did in the past. You're free and it's okay to come. Yeah. Praise God. Is there anybody else like that? Is there anybody else like that? Don't want to close it. Before it's time for you to come, praise the Lord. I know that they're coming. Amen. If you're feeling like you should come, if God is speaking to you, and you're saying, Lord, are you speaking to me? Why do I feel like this is for me? Why is he speaking to me only? It's for you. Right now, come. Praise the Lord. Everybody else who's okay, everybody else who's straight, they're sitting down and they're praying for you. Is there anybody else like that? Praise the Lord. I want to be closer to you. It's a song of our hearts. It's a meditation on our minds today. Oh God, bring me closer to you. And by faith, I, I believe this with all my heart, that by faith right now, that the, the Lord is in our midst through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that right now for those who are standing, those who have come, God with a big God eraser is erasing everything that you have done out of your life. That stuff that you thought that God couldn't forgive you for, right now he's erasing it. He's removing it. Let us pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now those who are standing are those you were longing for and yearning for and calling for and you didn't pass them by. Praise your holy name. I thank you, O oh Lord, that that you stopped in this spot today. That you're passing through and time is passing by. And that you're on your way for the second coming, but you stopped by here today, O oh Lord. And you redeemed somebody. You've forgiven somebody. And we are all in need of great forgiveness. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. I want you to follow Pastor Corey to my office real quick. He's just going to pray with you. He's going to pray with you, and if you have any other need, he's going to get it. So follow him right now, everybody, those who are standing. Now it's time, everybody, to magnify God. The Bible says... That heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents. Over one person out of the billions of people. When one person turns around, all of heaven celebrates. And so right now, we're going to celebrate. How about you? You want to celebrate? You want to celebrate the power of the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. How many people need the Lord in their lives? You're all I need. Every breath you give, you give me. Hallelujah. You know the song. I know you do know the song. So we need your help. You know, this is a congregation inspired song. We need everybody to sing with us. You're all I need. Come on. Clap your hands. Come on. Come on. Everyone singing. You're all I need. You're all. You're all I need. Every breath, every breath you breathe through me. You're all, you're all I need. Let your rivers Let flow. Let your rivers flow through me. You're all, you're all I need. Every breath, every breath you breathe through me. You're all, you're all I need. Let your rivers flow. Let your rivers flow. 
Right now, we're going to lift up offerings, so we're going to ask the deacons to come on up. We're going to pray, and then we're going to lift our offering, and then we're going to close out with prayer, and then we're going to go downstairs to eat. Who's hungry? Praise the Lord. It's all right. It's all right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we first want to give you thanks for this day, Lord, that you blessed us with. 
Lord, we understand that, Lord, this week might have been trying for some. Lord, it might, we might have went through some trials, but, Lord, you've brought us to this day, and we're thankful for that. Lord, we want to lift up offering to you today, Lord. Lord, it's just so ridiculous thinking about how much you give us, Lord, but how little you ask for. Lord, you've given us all these things, Lord. You've given us life, Lord. You've given us um, the houses that we live in, the cars that we drive, Lord. And all you ask is for is just a small little offering, a small little tithe, Lord. You ask for such so little. And the weird thing is, Lord, that by us giving you this, Lord, you're still going to bless us with even more. So we thank you for that. And we pray that the offering that we give will, will go to further your kingdom. Pray that it will go to do your work. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you so much for bringing us here safely to worship together um, for this camp meeting. I pray that you will be with our minds and our hearts and take the message that was given to us today so we can apply it to our lives and go out and share it with other people. I pray that you will be with us now as we go in fellowship and the rest of the activities for this Sabbath. Thank you once again for bringing us all here. I also want to bless the food that we're about to receive. Let it be helpful for the healing, strength, and nourishment of our bodies. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing a little louder 
than before. Hallelujah, say hallelujah, 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 hall